Hello and welcome to the weekly astrology and spirituality show with Patrick and Elisa Arundel for week commencing the 19th of April. Elisa, what does the Hermetic Wheel say for us this week? Well, if we put the wheel on the screen, we can see that at the start of this week, we commence in the 19th. We're still in that Four of Wands energy, which is that last deacon of Aries. So that's very much to do with family, home structure and where we feel safe and secure but on Wednesday that switches as we move into the first decan of Taurus. Now on the wheel we can see here that it is symbolized by the five of pentacles. The five of pentacles isn't the most easy energy if, if we're honest. It can mean that we feel a sense of lack uh, particularly around our material world or our financial world. So it could be that we're weighing a few things up in the middle of this week seeing where we need to share our resources and maybe seeing where we need to hold a few things back. Well that's really interesting because on Monday this week we see the Sun and Mercury moving into Taurus together and also we already have Venus the ruler of Taurus in the sign along with Uranus. So by tomorrow we have four planets if we see the Sun which is a luminary as a planet in that sign of Taurus that Elisa talks of. This is where the Hermetic Wheel and the Astrology don't always quite mesh together in terms of their timing. But you can see the transition is much more towards the worldly plane. So if we think of the symbolism of Aries, it's very much about starting things. The symbolism of, symbolism of Taurus is very much the foundation. And because it's an Earth sign and it is ruled by Venus, it can be very much about the material plane. It's about uh, feeling secure around our resources. So the five of coins, the five of pentacles, is kind of saying that we can't be too, uh, can't be too uh, free and easy with the money that we have. And part of that comes from the fact that on Tuesday, there's a quarter moon in Leo, which does urge us to splash out a little bit. It's a second, fifth house right angle, and that can lead us to feeling a bit more speculative or it can mean that in a close relationship someone may feel that they can come to us for some kind of financial support a loved one and if you are a parent you may have to remind a loved one that you're not the bank of mum and dad but this is also a week when uranus is going to be really sparkling alongside venus and mercury later this week so that could lead to some surprise costs but also give us the opportunity to come up with some imaginative ways to improve our financial situation. Also, Mars is in a really amazing link with Jupiter through to Thursday, and we can use our communicational skills to really power something forwards with a lot of passion. But the later this week on Friday, Mars does move into Cancer. And then it's asking us to think more about home, emotional, and security issues. So that links back to the energy of the sun in Taurus and also Elisa's five of coins or five of pentacles. Now, are you going to choose a card for this week as well? Yeah, so this week we're going to use the Healing with the Angels Oracle cards. They're such a beautiful deck and I feel like they do give us a little bit of food for thought. So let's see what comes up for us this week. Okay, the words on this card are truth and integrity. So I feel that no matter what happens this week, we're being asked to speak from a place of truth, but not only truth, that integrity. You know, someone might ask us an opinion, and I think this card is saying to us, you know, we can be honest about that. We can deliver that with some tact. We don't have to use brute force to get our viewpoint across. And I think that's where the integrity side of this comes in as well. I think we may also have to be very true to ourselves in some respect this week. You know, what is it that we're, um, trying to, to conquer in life or what is it that we're trying to you know put across to other people it's about coming from that place of of being genuine with our emotions oh that, that's really good now we did ask for people to write in to say if there was any keywords they wanted us to put into the thought for the week cookie jar and um, we only had one to be honest so that word was changes so how would you like to 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 discuss 
the concept to change. Well, first of all, thank you so much for writing in your word. And if you would like to, um, you know, write in more words, we can put those into the cookie jar and incorporate them into next week. But changes is such a fantastic one. Changes is about us evolving. It makes me think of that. We're in that kind of butterfly season at the moment, aren't we? Where all those uh, caterpillars have gone into their chrysalis and they're just waiting for a couple more weeks before we'll start to see them everywhere um, in the northern hemisphere at least. And that process of changing is very difficult for the butterfly. It's quite painful. They're quite restrained. Um, and it is a process. But once if they've gone through that process is a real freedom that comes about from that and I think that is sort of a metaphor for how we can see change it's not always this easy process if we're leaving a job or we're moving through a different stage in our relationship or maybe we're going through some physical change in some way in terms of our fitness or or health even it's not always that straightforward easy path but I think the ultimate end goal for when we're trying to change our life in a positive way is really worth that, that temporary struggle. Yeah, and I think people who work as potentially astrologers, potentially psychics and so on, have to be a little bit careful when we say to clients, oh, this is going to change. It's going to change in a positive way. Because, yes, for example, as you know, we're looking to try to move. We still haven't found anywhere. Um, and it may seem that once we get there, that there will be certain physical changes that will really meet our needs. For example, if we get to be in near the sea, but we're actually going to be much further away from, for, from some loved ones. So change sometimes comes with a degree of pain. It's not always uh, just focused on that upside. So we have to keep looking at things in the totality. So even if we leave an unhappy relationship, for example, if there are children involved, that could have an impact on their emotional health. Or, you know, we could live in uh, less than ideal uh, financial or property circumstances in, in, in those kind of situations. So... We can leave something that isn't working for us, but it doesn't mean that where we're going is always going to be absolutely a panacea for every single one of our needs. And perhaps there is a tendency to think that just changing something will in somehow solve it in, in its entirety. Mm. I don't think that's really true, is it? No, because we can sometimes end up chasing um, the change. And very often, this might sound a bit cheesy and a bit cliche, but very often the change has to happen within. Because if we're not happy in our current location, for example, uh, sometimes if we move, that will, you know, change things up and feel good. But sometimes we could move several times and still not quite find what it is we're looking for, especially if it's a more deeper spiritual uh, searching that we're looking for. Yeah, brilliant point. Well... Of course, we have been asking for people to share their birthdays with us. And we did have several entrants this week. So thank you so much for all your entries. I'm sorry only one person can be the winner. And what I'm going to do, I've actually put the winner, I've pinned the winner at the top of the week uh, commencing the 12th of April show. But I will also put Sereda C, who is the winner. I'll put Sereda's message from last week. I'll post that at the top of week commence in the 19th video so you can all see uh, what she shared. So Sereda was born in uh, The Hague in the Netherlands on the 22nd of April 1969 and uh, as you can see from the screen you can see her will. So what are the notable things for me here? Well her ascendant is conjunct a fixed star called Speaker uh, her ascendant at 23 degrees 50 Libra. So this is someone with quite a graceful disposition. Uh, I think that would be true if you serrate her, and I feel that you will come across in quite a, a, a genteel way. It is true that your ascendant, and therefore your speaker position, is in an opposition with Saturn. And both Saturn and the Sun are in conjunction in your seventh house of relationships. So I think that can be an area where you've had to show quite a lot of sacrifice, but maybe there have also been rewards. Now the interesting thing about uh, your chart is also that Saturn and the North Node are both at 29 degrees. Saturn in the sign of Aries and the North Node at 29 degrees 44 in Pisces. 
which means they're both at the anartic degree, so the last degree of that zodiac, of each of those zodiac signs. Now, some astrologers think that can be a very positive thing, others much less so. But certainly in terms of the North Node, I think that would give you quite a pure spirit. And some people would argue that when you came into this world, you did so uh, as a fresh entry, that there wasn't a past life. Um, that would be interesting. So if we did a draconic analysis of you, your chart would look very, very similar. Your moon is in the lovely Cancer, where it's... Uh, dignified but it is in the ninth house so you're now living in a different part of the world which is interesting because the moon in the ninth house often craves new and different experiences in a degree of variety but if we take the midpoint between the sun and the moon the sun being at two degrees in taurus it's actually at six degrees in gemini in the eighth house so you're someone with quite a lively mind you like challenges, the eighth house, you like to transform yourself in some ways. But at heart, I think there's quite a lot of air in your situation with that Libra and Ascendant and that Gemini midpoint between the sun and the moon, which suggests that communication is important to you. Now, in terms of what this year brings for you. So your solar return for this year sees the ascendant at 20 degrees Pisces. So very, very close to Neptune. So I think it's possible that your sense of sensitivity to your environment is going to be very, very heightened. Um, but also that ascendant and also that uh, position of Neptune are squaring up your Mars and also your solar return midpoint, also in Gemini, uh, but this time at 29 degrees, I think there's going to be some changes on the home front. And it may be that there could be uh, something around a physical change, like changing where you live, or perhaps there could be some uncertainties around your home life. But I do think you're going to do well financially this year, and some of that financial change can come about in rather an unexpected way, but you can definitely draw good things to you as far as your resources are concerned. So that's Sereda, who now lives in Williamstad, in Caraco, in the Netherlands Antilles. Now, I didn't know too much about this, so I went on to see where you live, and it's almost like a little Amsterdam in a, a, a kind of a, a, a tropical uh, setting, uh, with very colourful houses, just like beside the canal. Uh, so it was wonderful to connect with you at that level, Sereda. So I hope that all makes sense to you. Now, if your birthday is from week commencing the 29th of April, going into the start of May, then please do share it in this week's show so you can be chosen as the lucky winner. But thank you for everyone for taking part. Yes, thank you so much. And um, should we have a little look at our mailbag questions? Yeah, so the mailbag questions. So. Right, so I have it here. So if you would like to write in with a question, uh, we'll be sure to try and answer them uh, next week. So Nick writes in and he says, uh, would love to hear the story of how you two met. Did you know through your charts or readings? Well, to be honest, we didn't when we first started chatting. And Elisa wrote an article about six years ago that I spotted on a spiritual website, which I thought was very good. So I didn't know her, so I just dropped her a line and said, well done on the article. Don't think too much happened No, we, we didn't talk for a while after that. And then um, we just started to slowly talk. I mean, we, you know, we're in similar... Um, fields uh, you know of interest so but i did send you the article about veganism yes and how one has to be very careful on different nutrients yes and elisa didn't really speak to me for about a year and a half after um that. because i was a vegan um when we first met and i was very much like i didn't want to hear anything against veganism um i felt very passionately and very strong about it but also i felt like i'd done a lot of research about it and i would cook for at least two or three hours a day. And so I kind of felt... Looking back, do you think the article did show anything that you didn't know about at that time? Probably, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean probably? Definitely. Definitely. Um, but like, I... <laughs> like... The supplementation, um, I, B12 I wasn't B12 is taking. the big one. Yeah. And chlorine, is it... 
Yes, yeah. c- Corey. Yeah, I still take so, it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was really important. So we, we didn't talk for a little while. Um, and then um, Patrick was looking for somebody to help uh, with his marketing on Instagram, I think it was, and reached out to me. I had an interview. Um, amongst two other people, I yeah. might say. Um, so One who decided, uh, somebody who worked for me before, who's very good and just didn't want to at that time, and the other person... Uh, decided not that she didn't want to. Yeah, so I was the last one left. <laughs> and um, yeah. See, Alisa made that assumption. Not I didn't say that's what happened. So um, very open mind. Yeah. So we had an interview and it, it went well, and then we just started to connect after that, really. But Nick, you were asking about you know did it come up in readings, and it, it's funny you should say that because I was doing a lot of tarot at the time, particularly about my career. And I kept getting like the Two of Cups, the Lovers, um, the King of Swords. Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups. So even though my questions were very much related to Korea, they kept coming up with love answers. And I kept getting a little bit frustrated at that because... Um, you get frustrated, <laughs> you're joking. I didn't know who this person um, could be. And um, one of the cards, I think it was the Emperor, can... can if you get the emperor and the lovers together, especially with the two of cups, that can signify um, an older partner. So I kind of had in the back of my mind that we were connected, but I just really didn't feel uh, Patrick was interested in me in that way. Um, well, I'd actually said that to you. You, I? you did tell me outright <laughs> that you weren't interested in me in that way. Well, I thought you were too young. Mm. So, but that was quite a few years ago, yeah. and of course I didn't know how fiery Elisa could be and how much that would annoy her, along with the, uh, along with the, su- the supplement article. <laughs> because I'd been a vegetarian for 45 years, so I know that uh, you can starve yourself of quite a few nutrients very easily, even if you think you're uh, doing the right thing for animal welfare, which I did when I was 15 when I began, and there was none of the sort of wider information there is now. Mm-hmm. But even now, there's loads of people who just eat a lot of processed vegan or vegetarian food, which I think is rubbish because whenever I eat it, it gives me indigestion. So that's a sure sign it's processed. Yeah, it's still processed. So, um, yeah, it's it's chlor- It's not chlorine. What is it that I take? I take some supplement. Anyway. We'll put the name of the supplement on the screen. Yeah, that slipped my mind. But um, yeah, B12 is, is vitally important and also some fats. Mm-hmm. Um, but these are, you know, people are very passionate and, and obviously it's wonderful. They do care about animal welfare so much. Mm-hmm. And then in terms of the astrology, when Elisa started working for, for, for us and I realised how cheeky she was, and how much we had a laugh. I thought, no, no, she can't be attracted to me. This is ridiculous. But obviously I sort of extracted the key details. And then I realised that Elisa's Venus was conjunct my son, which is really good. But also uh, her Venus uh, is in the seventh house. So uh, in other words, my son is in her seventh house, which is, which is very good, as is my Venus and my moon, so that's a, a very good connection. But there's loads of things as well, and there's also dracon- draconic things that, that work together, Nick. So it was there, but even to this day, I, I still haven't done a composite analysis no. of the two charts because never had the need to do so. The most important thing in any relationship is listening to our hunches, not necessarily just being guided by the sinistry um, or the astrology, I'd say. Yeah, sometimes taking that leap of faith, you know, it's. It's rare, I feel, um, to have that connection with somebody. And so um, if we put barriers in between um, having that connection with somebody, um, we can really miss out on on quite an amazing experience. Yeah, keep a very, very open mind on all sorts of things, people's background, cultural differences, all those kind of things, because you just never know. I think the most important thing is to have similar values. Yeah. And for example, we both really care about animal welfare Mm -hmm. 
um, and eating very good local or organic food. That's something that really unites us. Mm -hmm. We also really unite around real ale. Yeah, and humour. <laughs> and humour. Bad um, humour, of course. Bad humour, of course. So yeah, it's all, um, but I was doing a few, when I kept getting those cards come up in my spread, I kind of took it from a sign from, you know, God that maybe I do, you know, I am ready for a relationship because I was very sort of happily single and had been for quite a few years. Um, so I started to do a little bit of meditation and um, I started to write down, you know, what my perfect partner would be um, and just wrote a list of the sort of top five or six things that were important to me. You know, humour was incredibly important to me. Um, integrity was incredibly important to me. Um, somebody who was spiritual, had a deep spiritual dimension about them, not necessarily religious, not necessarily my own beliefs, but just somebody who had that part of their nature. I totally nature. agree with that one. Someone who cared about animals, they didn't necessarily have to be a vegan or vegetarian, but really understood the welfare of animals. And um, somebody I could be myself with. And yeah, that was my tick list as well, to be things. honest. Yeah, and I got all of those things, <laughs> plus a ball of fire. <laughs> you we wouldn't have it any other way, I don't well, think. Well, maybe yeah. you yeah. would. <laughs> Shh, singed eyebrows and everything. That's why I've got to wear the specs to hide it. Save your eyeballs. <laughs> so um, that is kind of, yeah, we met through work, yeah. basically. Long About story six short. About six years ago. Yeah. yeah. And this August the 11th, we'll celebrate our fourth anniversary of meeting. Yes. Four years from our first date. Yeah. So thank you for that, Nick. And... Um, I hope you're continuing to feel stronger. And thank you so much for all uh, your comments. If you want your free daily horoscope, please see the link below where you can sign up and subscribe for that. And that will be fired into your email every single morning. And also, um, if you'd like to check out uh, the Eclipse series that I've done a deep dive for, keep visiting my channel and if you've yet to subscribe to our channel please do so so that when we share a video sometimes we share them late at night because we're always behind and you know if you get a, an alert you'll know it's there um the views have dropped a lot since we stopped doing the daily show the daily show is getting about 1400 views a day and i think this last uh, weekly show got about 1600 views so um if we could grow that, that would be tremendous. So anyone you could think of sharing the show with, we'd be very grateful. And we would like to bring it back as a daily show once we've got resettled. But at the moment, you know, our energy is still quite low from, you know, driving down like we are for, for quite a long way away from home and having to drive back the same day because you can't stay away because of COVID rules. So uh, it's been quite torturous and we've had two offers that have been, well, three four now that have been declined so it's mm. turned into quite a saga mm. but hopefully our luck will turn soon so we will yeah. keep you informed of that and if you'd like to become a patron please see the link below you can do so from three dollars a month and elisa shares uh, some very personal snippets on there and thank you to all our existing patrons we really appreciate thank your you. kind contributions so have a great week of this Taurus season as the Sun and Mercury power into the sign of Taurus joining up with lovely Venus and the rather unpredictable Uranus it's going to be quite a week but for now from the A team it is goodbye from him and it's goodbye from us goodbye, goodbye.